Hi, welcome back to Better Than Yourself. Today on Better Than Yourself, yogurt. Yogurt in the Instant Pot. Let me tell you guys, my life has been changed. This thing is awesome. I just found this, um, I had a couple of people tell me about the Instant Pot, and I was kind of skeptical at first. You know me, I don't really go mainstream on a lot of stuff. I kind of go old school. But they turned it out of the Instant Pot, and this thing is awesome. It can, it's a, it's a slow cooker. It's a pressure cooker. It is a rice cooker. You can make yogurt in it. You can make koji in it. You can, it's, it's awesome. You can actually, I've seen a couple of videos on YouTube where people actually take the, uh, take the, the cook pot out of it. It's got a nice heavy duty uh, stainless steel cook pot that it comes with. And they basically use it for a hot plate and they do some frying of some sandwiches in here. It's pretty awesome. But I wanna get started with just making some yogurt, just doing something simple. So you've seen my how to make yogurt video, and it was long, it was a lot of steps, there was a lot of, you know, to scald the milk, let it cool, da da da, and it just seemed like a lot of work. It, I think that video was probably 20 minutes long. So, using the Instant Pot, it's awesome. It's basically automated. There's a, a little bit of a step that we'll go through, but the yogurt that I made in it came out so silky and creamy and smooth, it was awesome. So I had to share this with you guys and turn you guys on to the Instant Pot. So let's talk about making yogurt in the Instant Pot. There, uh, like I said, there's a bunch of settings on here and the, the, the control panel is a little daunting at first, but you can get over it really fast. Let me, uh, let me show you what you need to do. Gallon of milk, I always use fat free. Uh, a lot of people say that they like to use the... A lot of people say that they use you know, whole, whole milk, they use, they use raw milk. Um, eh, I'm happy with my fat free. So an entire gallon of milk. This is a, this model is the uh, six quart model, so I've got some room in here. But there's two steps to yogurt making. You want to scald the milk, which means basically raising the temperature of the milk to about 170 degrees and then holding it there for about 10 minutes. What that does is it denatures the, the casein, the, the milk protein. So as that casein kind of unravels and separates out and, and becomes denatured, just sort of these sort of free-floating uh, casein proteins, once that occurs at 170 degrees, you can let it cool, add the culture, and then let it ferment for as long as you want. Some people, you know, just for a real simple yogurt, you can go six, eight hours. You can set that on here, I'll show you. I'm lactose intolerant. I cannot stand a little bit of lactose in anything that I eat, so I ferment mine for literally 24 hours, which is awesome with the Instant Pot, because I can type that into the Instant Pot too, and it'll dutifully hold my culture and my gallon of milk at 110 degrees for 24 hours, and it's awesome. So here, first step, like I said, we need to scald it, and then we'll cool it, add the culture, and then do the long ferment. So, with my milk in place, I push yogurt, and adjust, and the first setting there is boil. Now, it doesn't really boil. <laughs> it, like I said, it raises it to about 170, 180 degrees, and it scalds the milk. It does that denaturing. As I was talking, it realized that it had something to do, and it's going to go ahead and run that. This process, that was cold milk I put in. This will take about an hour. So, but I'll hear the tone, and then we'll come back in about an hour, and you'll see what the readout says, and you'll know it's ready for the next step. I'll talk to you then. All right, this just beeped, and it went from boiled to yogurt. So it kind of reminded you what you were doing, and if you take the top off, and get a temp on it, yeah, see it was holding it right around 175 degrees, which is perfect. That's just what we want to do for this yogurt. So at this point, we want, need to let this cool. You can leave the lid on. Um, I know some people that use this and make yogurt, they'll just let, let it sit overnight. Because basically you're sealed in here and you've got your hot milk, your scalded milk, and they'll just let this sit overnight and in the morning add their culture. What I'm gonna do is speed that up a little bit. Let me grab a bowl of ice water and then we'll cool this off and we can culture it right away. So basically what I've got here is just a, a bowl of ice water and I'll take this, this center part out, right into the ice bath, and I'll let this chill 
until it gets down to about 110 degrees. 110 degrees is a good point at which you're not going to kill off your yogurt bacteria, but you really need to let this cool. We, we wanted to get it to 170, we were just there. We're going to take it down to 110 and then we can culture it. So let's let this chill for a minute and I'll come right back. All right, so we've had this sitting in a bowl of ice water for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. We're 99 degrees, 100 degrees. I think, I think we're cooled off. I think we're below the danger zone for the, for the culture. So we'll just take this out, dry off the bottom, and then right back into the Instant Pot. Now I've got a uh, culture from the last yogurt that I made last week. So I'm making this week's yogurt. I've, I saved off a little bit. If you don't have a culture, go out and grab uh, a, just a, some good natural yogurt. Find something that says active cultures. Find something that you know lists the, the, the cultures that are in it. This is you know, like I said, something that I made last week, but it came from just a, a, something I bought at the supermarket and cultured and saved a little bit off and this is going right back in this week's batch. And I'll stir that in, make sure it's well distributed, get all that good bacteria going on in there. Put the lid back on. We'll hit yogurt again. Now be careful, we don't want to boil this. We've got our active cultures in there. We don't want to boil them. So I'm just going to hit adjust. And it clicks over to normal, meaning the normal, the, you know, culturing for yogurt. And like I said, I do 24 hours. So I'm just going to let this set at 24 hours. After 10 seconds, it switches over to culture and it starts the countdown. So I'm on normal yogurt and the timer. I'm good. I'm ready. I'm just going to put this off in the corner. I'll let this uh, ferment for 24 hours and we'll come back and look at it. And it's going to be gorgeous yogurt. So stay tuned. All right, time's up. As you re recall, we set the, the timer for 23 hours. And once the timer counted down that amount of hours, it goes back to just displaying yogurt again, meaning that you've got yogurt in your Instant Pot. So of course you don't have to incubate for an entire 23 hours. Like I said, I'm lactose intolerant and I don't want any lactose in my yogurt. You'll probably want to go for something more like about eight hours, which is a good minimum amount of time to, to incubate your yogurt in the Instant Pot. So once you see it says yogurt, you're ready to take it out and move it to the fridge. So as I take the lid off this yogurt, you can see that it's completely set up. This is great. This came out of nice firm yogurt and we can go ahead and eat this just like this. You can put this right in the fridge or you can put this over into a uh, smaller Tupperware container to store in the fridge. I think what I want to do is, is strain this and make this into Greek yogurt. So what I want to do now is put this in the fridge to chill for about 12 hours and then uh, we'll come back and we'll go ahead and strain this. All right, so here, let me show you my strainer setup. Basically, I've got a Lexan, a uh, colander, and just the thinnest tea towel you can find. If you've got some cheesecloth, probably want to do a couple of uh, layers of cheesecloth, or just use a tea towel. If you use something too thick, it's going to take a while to strain, so I usually just like to find a real thin tea towel and put that in there just to line the colander. And then this is the, our yogurt pot that's been chilled for about 12 hours, you know, overnight or a good part of the day, and then just dump it in. Now remember, we had a gallon of milk in here, so when I make my Greek yogurt, I like to do about 50%, so I'm going to watch. I've got my graduated bucket here. That's liters. Here, that's imperial units. I'm going to do, you know, my, I had a full gallon of milk, so if I can drain off two quarts of whey, I know I'm done. And then I'll just let this sit here on the counter until I see that it's getting right around the, eh, about, you know, a quart and a half to two quarts of, of whey in my, in my Lexan. And then I know I can go ahead and just put this in the fridge and I've got my Greek yogurt. So let's let this sit for a little bit. To expedite this process, sometimes you can just scrape the inside of the tea towel 
with a rubber spatula and it gets the thicker Greek yogurt away from the tea towel so it filters a little bit better. I do this once or twice during the straining period. All right, so we're just about done straining our yogurt here. You can see we're just at the, almost at the two quart mark with the whey. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and just pour this off into my, my yogurt box and this will go into the fridge. So if you're clever, you can take this yogurt and all in one swell foop, just kind of turn it right out into the, into the Tupperware. You might have to help it along a little bit with your spatula, but you can see that it comes right off the straining cloth. I like to take a, just a thin whisk and just kind of work through the finished product here a little bit and break up some of the clumps. And once you let this sit in the refrigerator overnight, this will all kind of homogenize and you'll have a nice finished product. Don't beat it to death. Don't take the, the hand blender to it, but just kind of break up the clumps. That's all it takes. Do that, pop the top on it, and there you have it, two quarts of delicious Greek yogurt. So thanks for watching, if you have any comments, leave them down below. If you have any uh, suggestions as to what to do with a couple of quarts of whey, leave those down below. I'd be interested in here, if you want to do something with this whey, let me know and we'll do a YouTube video about it. Thanks for watching guys, take care.